Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to debunk some myths? Yes, that's what we're about to do, y'all. We're about to do that with my co-host. It's gonna be you, me, my co-host, Coach Kamisha. She's gonna join us in a moment. But y'all, we're gonna get ready to debunk some myths. Yes, Rusty's in the building. Celie is here. Boom Brand. Rox is in the building. Y'all, what does it mean to be submissive to your partner? What does that mean? What does that look like? We're gonna talk about that. It's fibroids only caused by eating junk food. Is that true or false? It's fibroids only caused by eating junk food. True or false? Is there really a balance between femininity and masculinity? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have some fun on this dialogue. Oh my gosh. Again, we are going to be debunking some myths because you're like, what's true, what's not? And you get to hear it from women, divine, feminine beings that have been through this journey and been able to overcome it in the most cultivating way. Now, we are empowering other women to start, get on their path of healing, find, build their emotional intelligence, right? So it's gonna be fun. Share this video with a friend. Tell another friend that she needs to get here. She needs to be here right now, okay? So for those that don't know me, my name is Phyllis, founder of Five Boy Queen, and I help women eliminate five boy pain in less than 30 days without wasting time, money, energy on ineffective surgeries through my unique holistic program. Yes, I've been able to shrink and eliminate fibroids naturally. Now I help other women do that and help them start their journey of becoming a better version of themselves. Because once you start moving to your higher self, fibroids can no longer survive in your body. So let's bring Coach K on. Yes. Hey, Coach. Peace. Uh oh. There we go. Hey. Blessings. Happy Womb Intelligence Wednesday. Yes, I love it. I love it. How you feeling, sis? I'm feeling very much so divine. Mm. Feeling righteous. Mm. Feeling good. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, um, everyone. I'm Coach Kamisha Shade spiritual health and relationship coach. I work with Coach Phyllis and her amazing program, and I help the ladies ground their emotions, master their emotions, and also master their healthy romantic relationships. And so I'm excited to talk about some of these myths because this is going to be really good. It's going to be yeah. really good. Yeah. Rock, you're right. That is false. Walker, Pippin, that's false. All right. So Coach K, you go jump us off, right? You got a question for me. I definitely got a question for you. So it's going to be real good, y'all. So, Coach Phyllis. Yes. What is a common myth that surrounds the growth of fibroids in traditional workouts? Uh, fabulous question, sis. Fabulous question. Well, the thing is, doing the wrong workouts can actually make your symptoms worse. Uh, it can progress fibroid growth, right? And one of the ways that can happen is how much stress the body is under, right? So that can be affected by how much sleep, quality sleep you're getting, right? What you're eating, your emotional stability, the, the, the type of mindset that you move with, right? There's a lot of things in your environment that can affect the stress to your body. So that's really important when it comes to exercise, because your body can perceive your environment, what you're doing, how you're moving your body as a threat, 
it can receive the wrong message, which adds on to hormonal imbalance. So one of the things that I've been able to do and learn from being a bodybuilder, doing the traditional way of working out and the fibroids still growing was creating womb wellness workouts. And these workouts have helped me open up different energy channels in my body where I feel more connected, working my pelvic floor, encouraging the lymphatic system, and your lymphatic system is best friends with your immune system. So if they work together, that's gonna get some of the toxins out of your body that may be added to the fibroid growth. So Coach K, I feel like many women can resonate with our womb wellness workout structure because it makes them feel more connected. And I feel many women also get rid of their pain and congestion that surround PMS um, because of the, the type of movements that we do. It's very unique. And I created this solely based on the intention of eliminating fibroid uh, growth. So working the area of the womb, the uterus, and that is something that's missing in traditional workouts. So when it comes to the common myth that surround traditional workouts and fibroid growth is that you could be doing the wrong workouts. And the workouts you've been doing that were, uh, the workouts you did before fibroid growth cannot be the same workouts you do to eliminate them. They have to be different. They have to be uh, movements that help you relax your nervous system. And Coach K, once your nervous system is relaxed, your body's able to heal, right? So that is one myth is that Doing traditional workouts can help eliminate fibroids. The workouts have to be unique, it has to help you tap in to your inner self, and it has to encourage lymphatic circulation so that, you, that way your body can heal. So that's uh, the clarity on that question. Thank you for busting that myth, um, sis, and opening it up and providing a lot of value there. So I got a question for you. If you could summarize the percentage amount of women who come inside of coaching, right, how many of them are doing the workouts that are not beneficial to their womb? Like, if you had to give, like, a percentage. During the initial consultation, I would say almost every woman that I talk to are, not, are doing the wrong workouts. You know, and it's like, it's, I don't want to say wrong. Let's just say workouts that are not going to benefit them at this season as you're trying to eliminate an ailment out of your body. So doing high intensity training, row machines, um, cycle three days out of the week might not necessarily help despite dealing with heavy bleeding, <laughs> PMS, right? Uh, mood instability those workouts are not going to help the body get any stronger. So a large percentage. <laughs> That's pretty intense. That's pretty intense. Yes. So, wow. Yeah. Thank you for opening that up, busting that, busting that myth, because I didn't know that, you know, before mm -hmm. learning more about your program, I didn't know that. Like you could be in the gym working out for your looks and harming or, you know, not really aiding your internal health, which is really the most important. Right. Most important. Inside out. You said it. So, Coach K, I have a question for you. Absolutely. And I'm, just, I, I'm just so excited to ask this question because I feel like just talks I've had with my, my friends and just other women, this comes up a lot. So, what is the common myth that surrounds femininity and being submissive mm, Ooh, this is really good okay oh yeah listening ears open hearts open minds open so you know i had a client the other day he asked me she said you know this guy that i'm thinking of possibly dating is always talking about submission and i need to you know submit to him and submission and like she's like i feel like i'm doing the right thing but he's just like super is this ideal that he's kind of forcing me into and she said like really what is submission when it comes to like relationships and so the easiest way that i like to paint submission which submission is pretty much submitting and surrendering over um 
over your um, submitting to a leadership that's superior than you. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you are not powerful. You just, you're just making a choice, an intentional choice to submit to authority leadership that is more superior or maybe more logical than you, right? Amber, what's going on, goddess? Hey, Amber. And so, yes. And so, so this is the way um, I like to paint the picture. I like to, you know, use this analogy. Like, let's take, for example, I get in the car, right? I'm going to, you get in the car and you're driving to Florida. Like your destination is, let's say, Florida, right? You're already driving to Florida. You take a pit stop at a gas station to, you know, go get some gas. A man sees you and says, wow, I like her. I like the way she looks, feels, all of that. The man approaches you and says, hey, where are you going? You're like, I'm going to Florida, right? I'm, I'm going to Florida. And he's like, okay. You're going to Florida. Wow. Okay. Can you come over here for a second? Can you can you come take a look at something? Come look at my car. Look at how well I keep up with the oil. You know, look at look look at what I have going on in here. Look at how comfortable my seats are. Like, look at what I have built. Like, I'm a very high level communicator. Like, I'll t I'll talk with you in the process and, and keep you entertained in the process and keep your attention in the process of going down to Florida. Like, look at all of these things. Like, selling himself to you. This is courting, ladies. Please take notes. Right, because a lot of us skip the courting phase and we go immediately into a relationship and commitment and we skip the whole courting phase. A man must court you as you vet them. A man is courting your values, your morals, your feminine essence into his into the kingdom that he built. And he's courting that. And you are vetting to see if what he has built with inside of his kingdom is what you're gonna fall underneath submission in. Now we're going to Florida, right? Y'all following me? We're going to Florida, right? So I'm going to Florida and he's like, listen, he comes over and, and shows me his car. Look, look what I got going on, right? Can I take you to Florida? Right? I made you feel reassured, comfortable, you know, um, and all of these things. You have a really good chance of feeling secure here. Can I take you to Florida? Submission would look like me getting in his passenger seat and allowing him to take me to Florida, somewhere I was already going. Mm. So a lot of times, you know, women do, do lose their identity in this feminine role because they fall completely underneath submission to a direction they were never even going, right? And so when we start talking about submission and femininity, the concept is amazing and it's beautiful, right? But I want you to also know that submission isn't necessarily just present in relationships and it's not just something that you do in relationship you can submit to your purpose you can submit to your self-development you can submit you can be submissive to your higher self mm -hmm. right so i want us always you know as women as divine goddesses to remember that we have we have great power in and also out of relationships so the young lady, I, I explained to her the story. I, you know, coached my client through that analogy, and she was able to really identify. And she said, "Wow!" She was able to immediately see that number one, she's not being courted, okay, before the conversation even comes up. And then number two, a divine masculine man doesn't have to provoke you to submit to anything because his energy, in general, his energy is going to inspire you a level of comfort that's gonna make you want to submit and surrender underneath his leadership especially when it's alive somebody's having fun tonight okay so so you know i just wanted to break that down and open that up you know uh ladies let me know dr drop a one inside of the chat if, if that makes sense because this is a concept that a lot of us get wrapped up in like i need to be so uh, you know more submissive i need to be more submissive like my husband is telling me to be more submissive well internally intuitively if you are if you are not going the same place your husband is going or you don't want to go the same place your husband is going or you know vice versa it's like unequally yoked you will have issues submitting and you may think like oh wow is it because i'm too masculine no you have not clarified that y'all going to the same destination so mm -hmm. you don't feel comfortable with submitting and so i feel like that just helps somebody yeah definitely helped me <laughs> Because I, I know that many may think, you know what, I need to do these things, but 
if your partner is saying there is there is a disconnection or you need to do more of this it could be them saying that they are lacking in this area right because i like what you said a masculine man you, you will not have to be questioning your femininity because you're with a masculine man you know and everyone knows their 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 energy zones everyone knows their position when things are working in harmony so thank you coach k for um sharing that and in your program how do you help women identify their femininity? Like, what's one thing that you do um, to help them move towards recognizing their energies and um, embracing it? Absolutely. So we all have um, different archetypes, right? Like, I am, for an example, I'm a dominant mother energy. Like, my feminine energy typically expresses itself as mothering, nurturing, nourishing, right? And so inside of my program, I help the women identify exactly what is their dominant archetype of woman and be able to add some balance in that so that way they can be them, you know, their full self. So for an example, if if it's, you know, your dominant in the mother energy like me, right, you may struggle with, you know, putting yourself first, right? You may struggle with balancing motherhood and being sexy right you know you may struggle with um really being uh very very ambitious with your goals because you're you're, you're suited you're created you're dominant in the mothering nurturing i want to cook i want to feed i want to mm, mm -hmm. you're dominant in that energy so how i help women inside of the program is number one i help them identify their dominant feminine energy and then we we navigate and we add things in to help them really balance so immediately coming into the program you know exactly what style of femininity you are because femininity isn't linear it's it's not just this one little cute barbie girl in the barbie world vibe it is an ultimate creative energy and so yeah someone just said in relationship it means you're giving up your autonomy um i mean you know that's definitely a perspective i feel like in a relationship, you shouldn't have to give up anything. I feel like, you know, and this is this is what I coach and teach. Like, you shouldn't have to feel like you're giving up anything. Like, it's this sacrificing type of, like, concept that we were born and raised in, most of us, right? Women, if you, you know, if you're watching this live and you were born and raised in that sacrificial, like, being honorable because you sacrifice type of vibe, you know, that is the same type of energy that leads to resentment, okay? And that leads to rage. And so we don't give up anything. What we can do is we can commune and co-create something. And in that co-creation, we have our roles that we play, but you shouldn't feel like you're giving up anything at all. So I just wanted to, to add and mention that. So coach, I got a question for you. Yeah. What is a common myth that surrounds fibroid and diet? plans like diet nutrition and fibroids because you know myself never had fibroids but i have you know family members who have and they would do all the outside things but never change their diet mm -hmm. and so what's a common myth that you know you you see often with fibroids and diet yeah a common myth that i see is many think that they have to go on a certain diet in order to uh, move towards eliminating fibroids or improving their situation. And yes, your nutrition, your diet plays a role, but it's not the only role that resulted in fibroids growing in your body. It's more to it on a mental, spiritual, emotional, physical level. So anywhere in that paradigm, there was dysfunction, there is dysfunction, disconnection, something caused your cells to act funny, right? So this is one of the reasons why when I was suffering with large fibroids and anemic, like I was just always exhausted. It could be just getting up in the morning, I would be tired. And realizing that it was more than just a diet plan because 
I did all the diets. <laughs> I was a vegan. I was a pescatarian, a vegetarian, and none of that worked. It wasn't until I realized that it's beyond a diet. I have to build a better relationship with food. I have to follow a structured, flexible plan. I have to eat the right foods based on my makeup. And for me, that doesn't fall in a category, right? When you're dealing with fibroids, we cannot be plugged in, chucked, closed off into a standard way, a traditional way, a, uh, a, a traditional plan. It just doesn't work when you're dealing with something that's so dynamic that affects everything in your body, right? And that's why the, the traditional way, surgery, treatments are temporary. They are not going to get to the long-term root of fibroids, which is getting to the cells. And that prompted me to follow, follow this cellular-based approach when it comes to eating. That's gonna help you get to the root because for your cells to be acting funny, it's not getting what it needs. And one of the ways is through nutrition. So in our unique holistic program, we help the women build that relationship with food and understand that, you know what? I live a busy lifestyle, but I still need to eat in a way that's gonna heal my body so I can get rid of these fibroids, but also have some flexibility. And sometimes it's not gonna fall into a vegan vegetarian, vegetarian plan, but a plan that's tailored for you. And I think that's very important that we stop putting ourselves in boxes to think, you know what, I need to do this, I need to do this, but let's find what works for you. And Coach K, I think that's a common myth when it comes to um, fibroid elimination through nutrition is looking for a, a plan that is limited to where you are right now. I know also that our skin color, skin color plays a role too in how we metabolize food. So it's very important that you're considering all of that and also your blood chemistry, your lab work. So there's a lot that goes into just a diet plan, but how is the diet plan working and having a tailored approach? So that's my, um, that's me debunking the myth that, you know, food, diet plan is going to eliminate fibroids. No, it has to be a tailored approach. Yes. And you know, I just want to add something on that because I'm thinking about, okay, if food wasn't the only thing that created the fibroids, food is not going to be the only thing that heals the fibroids. It's like almost like a team effort almost. If I, if I you know, putting it in my mind, you know, based off, everything that creates the fibroids there you got the team team food you know you got the this you got food you have emo suppressed emotions anger resentment um you know suppression you know environment all of these things it becomes this big old team and a team like you you know um i'm, I'm not sure if you can hear me but you know let's create some fibroids up in here so i feel like when coming into it with the approach like okay you got to take everybody on a team out right you, you have to cater to every single thing that's on the team that's creating this um like this really toxic environment inside of your body and then aid each and every one with a holistic way because i think a holistic approach is as permanent lifestyle approaches you can pop a pill you can go for surgery you can do all of these temporary things, but if you master your health and you master a holistic way of healing, baby, you're good for life. Yeah. So that includes, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm just really thinking about it. Like even like mastering this skill and this lifestyle, it's like it, you become this like wellness warrior. And that's the reason why I love to call your women like the womb warriors. Like you become this wellness warrior and you're super confident when your baby gets a cold. Oh, no, da, 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 da. like you have a holistic way of operating now. You're super confident when all of these things are popping out in the air. And you're like, oh, I know exactly what to do to get myself right. If I can't, you know, if I feel anything, if I sniffle, oh, what? Right. I'm a wellness warrior. And I feel like that's something I really want to just really illuminate here because I know for myself, 
when I started really learning about wellness and taking my health very, very seriously and being a conscious consumer with the things that I ate, heard, listened to, all of those things. I'm like, I'm, I feel like a warrior. So mm -hmm. it, when I'm traveling back and forth, I'm going from north to south, from country to country, and I get a little sniffle and I get a little throat sore. It lasts maybe a couple of hours because guess what? I'm a wellness warrior. I know exactly what to do for myself. And so that's something that I want, you know, every single woman watching this live to know like a big part of femininity is being a whole, your own holistic healer. And if you feel like you're so far away from that, it's really important, very important that you master that. That's really mastering being a woman because we create other humans. Yeah. So that means we need to have the formula to heal humans and it starts with ourselves. Yeah. It starts ourselves that part starts with us and before i forget for those that are listening and you're you're really serious about getting some support on getting to the root of fibroids you've had surgery and now the fibroids have grown back doctor says another surgery and you're just sick and tired you're that woman that's sick and tired plug into my dms learn more send me a dm learn more and i can send you next steps in order to move towards that direction so coach k i got a question for you <laughs> what is a yeah what is a common myth that surrounds the balance is there a balance between femininity and masculinity yes so i believe the myth is balance I believe that as women, we are multidimensional and multifaceted. So this idea of getting to a point where we're like this doesn't even exist. Mm -hmm. I feel like integration is what people are really looking for and women are really looking for when we talk about masculinity and femininity. Because the truth is we, we embody both energies right but depending on the path that we take we lean more into a certain type of energy so for my holistic healers and my you know spiritual women and my women who are taking the having i call it the goddess journey we're leaning more into that divine feminine energy because it's required for the mission right and so integrating your energy based on what it is that you need and how you need to show up in your life, I feel like it's extremely important. So for an example, if you're going through, you know, a very, very tough time emotionally, right? You're, you know, maybe feeling a little insecure, maybe scattered brain, you know, you're just not feeling like yourself. Well, that's the time to lean into your mothering divine feminine energy to nurture yourself and nourish yourself back to a point where now you feel activated and you can go into your work and you can go do your things and be your ambitious self and then embody that real heavy big massive ambitious confidence mm -hmm. which is more of the masculine energy so you see how it wasn't like you pull away from one just to get to another one you just integrate one up to wherever you need to be or you stay there yeah. so i feel like the game of feminine energy and masculine energy is the game of integration how well can you integrate it how well number one are you aware of what it is that you need to integrate sometimes we need masculine energy sometimes we're maybe a little bit too flexible too indecisive right too much too, too go with the flow right sometimes we need to incorporate that divine masculine energy to give us that divine strategy that divine structure and that divine security and so I feel like a big myth is balance, like balancing the both. I feel like that, I feel like balance is something a little bit more achievable for the masculine, right? Like a man who is wired to, you know, be black and white. I feel like balance is more of a thing for them, but integration is more of a thing for us because our lines don't look X, Y, Z, black, white. Our lines look like, right? And so, this is where multi self-awareness and I, the first phase inside of, you know, the feminine EQ mastery program is learning about yourself. Mm -hmm. Like learning about all the different versions of, 
of yourself and learning what it is that you need to incorporate and maybe some things you need to pull back from, right? Some women are wounded feminine and they think that they have this feminine energy and they think like, why is it like working for me? That's because the energy that they're leading with is wounded feminine energy. And so we dive really deep into that in private coaching. And you can, you know, uh, definitely feel free to click the link in my bio. And I have a you know, free video where you can watch and see the three frameworks of really embodying this divine feminine, um, this divine feminine energy. But yeah, that, I feel like that's definitely a myth, um, the balance part of it. I feel like it's, it's more integration. And, and what I've learned in my life is integration and alchemy is mm. key, key. That's mm. key. Like using, you know, using the different things around you and also using the things with inside of you to get you to your next destination. And that may be pulling yourself out of depression. That may be, you know, um, attracting the man of your dreams, right? That may be giving birth and giving life, right? Unlearning some habits and giving birth and giving life to a new healthy child. It all varies. And if you can integrate and you know what to integrate and when to integrate it, that's, I believe, that's mastery all day. Mm, wow. That was phenomenal. And it makes me think back on just a lot of my, I would say between the time of like my early 30s to uh, mid 30s, I know I spent a lot of time in the masculine, just with relationships, uh, just with the experience. And that also sets a tone for causing dysfunction in the way that my body works, especially my feminine parts. Spending too much time in, in one um, type of energy zone, and that's what the masculine can bring, is that one type. And not being in harmony with my feminine, which is all of this, which you just said, Coach K. So women out there that are struggling or dealing with fibroids, realize that being in the masculine and what that may look like is, you know, um, you're constantly in a role of making decisions, you know, being the go-to person, being the leader, right? But there's no harmony with you going back into your feminine self. And Coach Kay, I would love for you to just kind of give like two characteristics of what a masculine, um, uh, exercising the masculine energy may look like as well as a feminine. So that way you, again, as you said, stay in integration or in harmony. So that way it does not affect how your feminine parts work. Because just know that the energy you're given, your body's going to, your cells are going to be able to, um, to feel that. And they are going to act in reflection of how you move how you think, because you're a big cell, right? So I know I said a lot, but I'm saying that it's very important that you know how to harmonize being in the masculine and in the, the feminine. So Coach K, could you give us like two um, characteristics of what masculine looks like versus feminine? Absolutely. So let's take for an example, you a boss, baby. You're a boss, babe, mm -hmm. right? And shout out to all my boss babes out there. We love y'all. And so let's say you're a boss babe, but you also are used to taking the lead inside of your household, right? You're maybe caregiver for your mother. You always find yourself taking on other people and like what they need and their needs and all of those things. It's almost like you feel whole when you do that. And when you're not doing it, you feel like something's missing. That's a great way to identify that you're really heavy in your, in your, you know, your masculine energy because you're taking control, you're taking charge, right? You feel, you know, very high levels of responsibility, right? You feel like I have to be this big person all the time and stretch myself extremely thin. And so, you know, if I could counteract that um, with, with femininity, excuse me, if I can add what it would look like on a feminine level, it would be you being more, right? 
being more and doing less. So by you being, you're able to be that inspiration, that emotional safe space, having the emotional availability and capacity for others around you. So you are like a safe haven just by your being, not going out and, and, and doing, 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 but really being your full self, which requires you to do your inner work, your shadow work, your self-love, your self-care, right? And having so you having your aura be so big that others around you are um, affected by it, by nature, right? So that's like the first one, like you're a hero because you do for everyone. That's more masculine, right? We see that more in husbandry, right? And then the second one is you're a hero because you embody the energy that people around you need. And now they're inspired and they can use that and they can benefit and they can value from, you know, they can take value away from it because they have access to it because you are. So the first one is doing. This, the first one is the masculine doing. The second one is the feminine being, embodying. So that's one example. And then, um, you know, another example is speed. I would definitely say speed. Now, some of us are just a little fast. That's just maybe how we were born and raised. Like, I'm from New York, you know, so we just used to moving fast, talking fast, doing things fast. However, when we're doing things so fast, our energy is trying to catch up to our body and our body is trying to catch up to our mind so a lot of the times we're out of harmony because either our bodies is you know all the way back here trying to catch up to our mind our minds all the way over here and our spirits all the way over here and we're just going so fast and light speed that we start falling out of harmony which causes us to be successful with successful in business and successful in work however still feeling uneasy still having anxiety, still having a lack of patience, still being emotionally triggered. And so on the other side, which is more, you know, divine and more feminine, we have the speed of ease, not necessarily slow, but ease, where you're more conscious and you're more aware. You don't forget what you're saying every five minutes, right? You're aware of how you're feeling, like you know, you actually know what you need when it's time to communicate your feelings. It's like, what's wrong? Oh, I don't know. You know, right? Instead of it being like, oh, I don't know, or I don't know what's wrong with me, you know exactly you know what I need to get into some sun. I'm low on my water intake, and I'm feeling inadequate because I haven't been doing my affirmations. Boom, self-awareness, right? And so, you know, one side of it is speeding in Gonzalez, getting a lot done, and doership, which there's a time and a place for it for sure, especially in business, right? And then the other side of it is the feminine, which the speed is more ease more conscious it's more aware and also it's more grounded it's regulated it's sure it's certain and it's confident so it needs not to speed and so let me know if that makes sense y'all if y'all y'all feel that definitely drop a one in the chat alita yes i felt that let me drop a one awesome awesome Yeah. Right. So, and then one last question. It's getting dark here on my end. I'm getting ready to blend in real quick, y'all. <laughs> I'm getting ready. You gonna see my? You only gonna see. My, <laughs> this is what that melanin do. You heard? Melanin. <laughs> uh, question. Right, okay. And, and one more thing. One more thing that you said. I just really, really, really want to talk about real quick. And then I have one last question for you. One thing that you said. You said, depending on your complexion. Let's talk about that real quick. Because you said, based on your complexion, you are more delicate and sensitive to things. And I didn't yes. realize it until it was, it was this point in time. It was several different things happened. Like, I remember it was this one time, this guy I was um, dating, he said, you know, I'm in love with dark-skinned women. And this is actually a new thing for me because I understand them better. But when I was growing up, I never got along with dark-skinned women. And he was a dark-skinned man. And he said it was because they were just so dominant and strong and they were almost intimidating. They weren't like the soft mixed looking women who were like these little soft precious cupcakes, right? They were almost like mother energy, right? And so I, we were able to uncover what he actually meant by that. The, mel the, the amount of melanin that we have activates 
anything that we feel and think about and touch and say. So when right. we speak things where our melanin is charging our words, that's the reason why we can manifest like, like, like it's nothing, right? When we think things, our melanin charges our thoughts and pull it into reality within, you know, milliseconds, right? When we, when we uh, feel things, we get that much more depressed, if you think about it. We get that much more sad right we hold we have a bigger container and we hold that much more anger and resentment so i feel like this is a very important thing for melanin women to understand like based on your complexion it's it's important to be mindful of the way your melanin magnif magnifies things that are around you in you in you what you're saying what you're feeling what you're thinking what you're you know uh who you are being your melanin amplifies it times 20 more than any other shade because it's that high level of potency that you know back in the day the, the young boys they didn't want the dark skinned woman because that potency was almost too intimidating mm. and so i just wanted to mention that because it is it's important to know and as i'm looking at the women who has had fibroids in my family and they were dark skinned and so um it just it's just rather interesting that our melanin it, it, it's an amplifier. Yeah. And if we can understand that, we can use it to work for us. Right. right. And so my last question for you, because this is, this is so, listen, if you all are taking so much value, if you're taking value from this live, what we're talking about, how we're vibing now, you know, I know you can barely see me, but Coach Philly got the brightness going on. So we just balancing <laughs> each other out, got the light and the dark, you know, the vibes. And if you're feeling this, and, and, and you're really taking away a lot of gems, please type a, type a one in the chat. And furthermore, when Coach Philly gets ready to repost this video, comment down below your takeaways because y'all have been, you know, blowing up the comments and really being active, and we appreciate y'all. So we got one last question. I got one last question for you, Coach. So what is a common myth that surrounds stress and fibroids? Because this is a big one. Yeah, this is a big one. And it's actually going to emphasize what you just shared. So when you go online, research about fibroid stress, now that's becoming a thing. Um, it's, it's definitely um, has been something that played a huge, huge role in fibroid development, but now more and more people are learning how it's connected. Research demonstrates how fibroids can result in stress, but there's not enough emphasis on how stress actually triggered fibroids. Stress of the body moves towards disease, fibroid development. And a lot of research out there has to be considered on how it really relates to you. And is it for you? Because not all research is good research, right? And the research research that's out there, the evidence, where it's been tested on, the type of people it's been tested on, all can vary and that can affect the results. So got to be intentional. It's not enough to just go and do your research. You really have to know who you are, what you're looking for, so that way you can be led to the right information. Because research never told me that I can eliminate and shrink fibroids naturally. Research never told me that, but I had the belief it was possible, right? I had the belief. So it's very important that, that we understand stress in the body, stepping out of your femininity too long, no harmony between your masculinity and femininity, what you eat, the type of foods you eat, your complexion, the type of workouts you do, all of that is going to affect the stress in your body. And as a deeply vibrant, melanated being, such as yourself, right? You absorb everything in the environment. You are, are extremely powerful. I'm talking to you. You that are listening, right? The women that are listening, you are powerful. Say it to yourself, I am powerful. But you're also vulnerable because your skin color is magnetic, it's electrical. So it's vulnerable 
to absorb everything in the environment, whether it's good or bad. So you're constantly in a, a chaotic environment. There's a lot going on. That's all going to be a reflection of what you're taking in and what may not be coming out. So we have to know that as melanated women that we absorb a lot more, right? We have the, the uh, ability to absorb a lot more. So there has to be a flow, a release that's happening as you take in all this energy, right? Because if not, it's going to accumulate where? On your uterus and eventually leads you down the, the path of fibroids. So the energy has to be released. And that is why we do emotional regrounding sessions in the, uh, in, in, with the warriors. I do emotional regrounding sessions with the warriors because we have to re realize that these emotions that we carry, especially the ones that are causing congestion, stagnation in the body, need to be uprooted. It needs to come out somehow, right? Because if not, we're going to constantly build with all this energy and it has nowhere to go, right? And it causes a lot of stress to your organs, your systems, and leads to hormonal imbalance, chronic inflammation. So our emotional regrounding sessions help women identify what emotions need released so that eventually you, you start to move towards the positive side of healing. And um, in our unique holistic program, that's, that's a major game player because stress, leads to disease, it leads to fibroid development. So we, if we can release the stress, we have a sound structured practice um, and you have the accountability, getting the community to stay consistent, you could further decrease your risk of fibroids and disease. So that is the biggest myth is that fibroids cause the stress, but it's really the stress causing the fibroids. Wow. It's interesting to know that we are the cause of everything. And I feel like so often we can use that energy to validate that we're a victim. However, we can use that same energy to validate why we have the control to change our reality. So, yeah. beautiful. Any questions, you all? I know this has been a beautiful, it's been a beautiful night. I feel like we're kind of like having dinner together right now. Like, you know, beautiful night, good conversations. Listen, make sure after this live, when it's posted, you come back and you comment so we can really see who has been here and who has been engaging. We didn't catch all the comments, but comment below, you know, share this video. I've seen a few of you are like tagging people. Make sure, send this video. Make sure you send this video in. Um, person says 100%. And, you, you know, like this is, um, this is very important because these keys and these myths, right, the, the, um, the busting of the myths that, that we just did, it's important to know because like, it's a lot of talk, right? It's a lot of talk out there. You're you're hearing talk from the doctors. You're hearing talk from your family. You're hearing talk from and 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 projection from social media. You're getting a lot of information. It's very important that you stay in alignment with divine order, yeah. and that's you being in your divine feminine energy. You being a holistic healer, and you moving in your like your your womb warrior energy, because that's why you right now my life has changed since my health has changed and i've always been a thin you know um petite young lady short petite however i was not healthy and so now that i am in a state of continued health i feel like a warrior when things you know, call, people cough around me and all of the, I don't, I don't have that level of anxiety when we hear these outbreaks and these things happen. I don't, I'm not scared. I'm not scared to go to different countries where maybe malaria is in the air, like, right, go, traveling to the motherland. I'm not nervous about that because I know I have enough of commandment over my body to tell my body exactly what to do. 
right? And so if you really think about this on an energetic level, you become you become the master of your reality. So you have these wonderful two coaches looking at you as you're looking at us. Look at you. Do us a favor um, and make sure you are engaging in this video and you are sharing this, right? Because these are things that every day we're hearing, right? You may be hearing things from your doctors. You may be hearing things from your husband, right? You may be dating a guy who's talking about submission and all of these things. And like, even, you know, my client was like, yeah, what's he's trying to do polygamy and all that. I'm like, you know, like even, even those things, if you don't know any better, you will fall victim to certain things that are not in your divine pathing. And it doesn't make the concepts incorrect or wrong. It just may not be directly in alignment with you. So it's really important to be proactive and educate yourself, right? And so this is the reason why we are here. It is Womb Intelligence Wednesday. It is Womb Wellness Wednesday, Womb Warrior Wednesday. Um, thank you, ladies. Um, Roxelle says, thank you, ladies. Thank you for joining um, and any closing words, goddess, by the way, your skin is glowing beautifully, <laughs> as it already is. I'm like, I'm like, Coach Phyllis needs a skincare line, period, because the way yeah. your skin, I think I, w I think I was, um, the other day I was looking, I was like, Coach Phyllis looks like she invented shea butter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, You're so sweet. Up. You're the sweetest love. Yes. And I got to agree with you. I second everything you just said, because if you're not in alignment with who you are, what you're here to do, you're going to make, you know, faulty decisions or uninformed, unintentional decisions, whether it be from your doctor, from your mate, even from your own mother, right? And that was the hardest thing for me, being um, raised in the African culture. My parents are from Ghana. I was a daddy's girl, wanted to please everything. I uh, wanted to people please when it came to my, my parents and family doing what they wanted me to do, being obedient, but not knowing they were just placing all their fears and beliefs in what they wanted me to do, right? And, and that alone was just an opinion. And till this day, I'm looking back to say, you know what, that was an opinion. And same thing with you. You get an opinion from your doctor that opinion does not have to be yours. Is it in alignment with where you wanna go? You understand that it's not just getting fibroids removed. You are you know, risking the integrity of the uterus, scar tissue, right? Decreasing your risk of fertility down the road and the risk of fibroids growing back again. So it's like, you know what? I wanna to get to the root of it. And if that, that is you, you're that woman, you have learned from your past experiences. You have learned with this life with Coach K and I how all of these things integrate and can cause your body, your cells to be in dysfunction. And you would like that guidance from women that have been able to do it themselves. You're ready to get empowered. You're ready for a structured uh, nutritional plan. You're ready to follow a unique holistic approach to get to the root of fibroids. Let's go. Send me a DM. Learn more. Coach K, what are we wrapping up with? Absolutely. You know, it's Wednesday, y'all. So do something nice for yourself tonight, even if it's making you a you know, cup of tea, taking you a bath, reminding yourself how much you're loved and how much you're supported, finding reasons to validate your uniqueness, um, reminding yourself of the relationship that you have with yourself by acknowledging it tap in with your heart make sure you're breathing gently and slowly and deeply like monitor the way you breathe through the day and so tomorrow's gonna be a vibe for you it's gonna be real fly for you um and your dreams are coming true because you are morphing into the woman that you need to be now if you've been feeling stuck and you know it's time for a change use this life as the breaking point and the tipping point for you to say you know what it's time for me to really level up and i need help right a big part of femininity is communal support and help we're used to the independent syndrome doing things on our own and struggling in the dark with our darkness and our challenges and our diseases what if i told you it's your divine right 
to have other women help support you. And so, with that being said, family, y'all have a blessed night. This was amazing. Please put your comments down below so we can see um, what you all have to say as we were going through them as best as we could here. But it's a great time to be alive. And so, as my mother always say, y'all be good to yourself. Yes. All right. Peace and blessings.